welcome to war blog today we're going to look at the capture of Izium. um still working on a few others i have i don't have time to sort of keep up to speed with everything that's happening it's um astounding <clears throat> no i mean it's uh, it's happening way too fast for me to sort of like continually think about it all um but I was working on this one. <coughs> this is the first one that sort of gave me an impression of what was where. Russian forces defeat the 81st separate airborne assault brigade. So this is sort of, you know, quite specific to the units um, that are at play. I'm not sure what this will look like in the video, but my screen's really crap, so it looks a bit odd. But just before I sort of maybe play it, I'm not going to play it all. I just want to keep it a short video, really. Um, obviously, oh look, there's a bridge. There should be a bridge there. I have to do that. Um, <clears throat> I was just sitting here looking at this and thinking, this is really interesting. You, you, you know, I don't know what's what. I mean, there we've got the 81st, we've got the 90th Air Mobile Battalion, a company from that. Here we got the um, the 5th Battalion uh, Tactical Group. Under here we got the 122nd Air Mobile, and once you get to that sort of level, it sort of becomes a bit more sort of interesting. And anyway, I, I got this thing from Southfront actually, and um, I also saw it on Twitter. And I was beginning to sort of give up on Twitter really because it just seems to me to be sort of like what Silicon Valley want you to sort of think about the war. It's just this continually sort of diatribe of you know russian tank more russian tanks blown up um more russian people surrendering the worst war ever um and then time and time again you read all the sort of this you know they seem to be sort of adding to the little areas um on the little graphs and you, when you look at it it's, they're not small areas you know it's a huge country I mean, the whole idea that you could sort of like just sort of whiz across it in a couple of sort of days and capture the whole lot seems a bit sort of, you know, I mean, stupid. But the thing is, I think <clears throat> what I'm trying to get to is that the people that are controlling Twitter sort of want to control that. They, they want people to think that. Or rather, they, they want to, you know, they're not really sort of saying what well, we you know they're actually sort of making steady and, and consistent ground considering they've got sort of you know a huge army to move around it's it's like they've just sort of like driven down a road got blown up and someone's taken a picture of them and, and that's that what i'm sort of building up to here really is i'm going to try and look at this now i've got my <laughs> it only appears with me i mean i don't get anything you know i think all one sort of whatever i thought i'd do my map I know my maps aren't great, and I'm sort of sitting there because the reason I'm sort of showing you this because I found this. Now this isn't by this person. This is by something else, and there's more of them. See, this map is sort of I was thinking, oh, that looks sort of good. You know, you can see how much they've taken, and maybe that's optimistic. But if you look at these, and this sort of, it blew me away in a little bit, in a little in a small regard. But when I looked at it, I thought, my God, you know, so this is done by John Meany W. And I've looked at his profile and, you know, it says up there, sort of, it's quite hard, you know, exact locations, compositions and identification of units is difficult to determine currently, really. Okay. So, but the thing is, from a war gamer's point of view, this is sort of like, the map is fantastic. The line work is fantastic. I haven't really read any of the information because I just don't have time. But the resource, this resource, is so phenomenal that I could just sit here and sort of think, well, I could do this front. This looks really interesting. I don't even know where that is. Um, I mean, what is this? The Kiev Cherniv area. So this is to the north. So presumably the border is there. So Kiev is probably here somewhere, which probably represents that. Um, and so I could do this line here. I could just zoom in there, bang, that little line there. The mass, and you know, because the thing is, on the big maps, what they do, they they sort of 
um, they sort of give you the only they, they sort of make you think that well they've driven down here and they've stopped at Kiev but and I was thinking about this a while back they've got to have a flank and they do so they've got these units on the flank um, and then you've got this one which is the Kharkiv and Donbass area so Donbass is down here and you can see they've taken all of this stuff and I, I, I haven't really even you know this was what I just did was Izium there and obviously they sort of taken that because this is the 6th of March so this is out of date but you know they've taken that that was a little battle I did there the one I'm looking at now but what about this one what about this front line I could just have a I could just sit here all day making maps and, and the only thing that I would say in my defense these maps are a little easier to make than mine because all you've got is one map that you're constantly adjusting this squiggly line and then moving these little units about to create a map you, you, you know but it'll clearly you have to be looking and somehow trying to figure out what's what and where's where and clearly have an understanding of the structure of both armies so for example you know I could do this and this this is far more sort of compelling because it makes you realize that the reason they're not getting up to this place to the scenario is because you've got this motorized unit there and so I could do that, you know, I could sort of think, well, okay, well, I've got these units and I could do a little scenario for that, a little scenario for that, a little scenario for this, you know, this whole area here. And what about the, all of that? So I'm really, really, I feel way behind, but I'm not too bothered because it's not my profession. But, um, you, you, you know, it, these are phenomenal maps and these are sort of, you know, when you start to look at this, you, you know, and then you start to sort of think about what the media is telling us. We, it's quite clear that they're just presenting level stupid information that is going to control what people are thinking. You know, this is such a mind-bogglingly vast operation. They're not really communicating that at all in any sense. They're not giving the, you know, the, it's it's like. They're trying to give the impression that Vladimir Putin has gone mad and is running around with an axe, you know, shooting people, in particular little children. You know, you've got this entire sort of thing, probably unprecedented, you know, certainly for a long, long time. Oh, well, I don't know, really. But I mean, when you look at that, I mean, my, I'm just sort of my mind is boggling um it's it's just so huge and it makes you realize of course there's going to be sort of casualties i mean if you've got a front line here you know what about this priluki front line what about this, the romi front line you know they're going to be firing at each other there's going to be casualties on both sides and of course they're showing all of the <clears throat> russian casualties and none of the ukrainian ones and it, it, it only stands to reason if they are making this ground there's going to be tons and tons and tons of ukrainian things that have been blown up and we're not seeing any of those pictures and i don't really want to go too much into sort of you know exactly why that is because obviously it's a sensitive thing but when you see this it, i just i've only just spotted this you know after i did my um my, my capture of whatever it is um and it's made me rethink things because um not not mass massively but the thing is i just don't have time to sit here and, and do this you, you know compete with this to some extent not that i'd want to but i don't have time to sort of churn out scenarios i so, so thinking if someone's following this war they're not really going to look at my site and sort of for, for the latest you know when this is really you, you, you know everything i mean this is like you know i mean given license for any sort of disinformation um it, there's probably no grounds for for sort of uh, thinking that there is really anything wrong with this map you know maybe they haven't got this far maybe they've got a bit further but you you don't get this sort of detail without sort of be essentially being far more based in reality than, um, than than anything else I've seen. So anyway, I'm going to have a look a look at this, and 
I like my little maps, and you know, I'm very happy with them. And um, you know, you can play these ones, uh, which is sort of a bit of a uh, a bit of an old way to think of things. Um, but um, they they take it took, took me about two hours to make this, and it's not particularly good or correct. And it's certainly not as astoundingly appealing as that from the overall strategy. And this, but this is just one little battle. So I thought I'd just make a video really to sort of note that point. Um, obviously, I can't do one of these for everything that's happening. But there's going to be about probably 30 or 40 scenarios every day. And I could be sitting here churning them out. But I don't think they're sort of graphically appealing enough to make to warrant that or, or to sort of interrupt my life. Sort of just churning out scenarios, you know. I've just done one today, and I'm still trying to sort of catch up with one I did yesterday. And I've still got a backlog of other ones as well as, you know. So this is not the place to get your up to the minute um, information on what's happening. That other Twitter thing is probably the thing to be looking at if you want that sort of information. But at the same point, um, you, you know, it's a lighter sort of. Um, I, I, I like to sort of intake of the same thing, um, but yeah. So I mean, it, it's strange. It's a strange business, really, because I, I, I'm sort of I'm quite interested in exactly what's happening, and I think the mapping is just key to shedding light on that. You know, you don't need any of the pictures really. I, I do a lot of research with old newspapers, and you know, quite often when I get into either the First or Second World War, even some of the others, you occasionally see these maps, and the maps are what makes makes it all interesting. But I'm going to give it <clears throat> I'm going to give it a little blast. I don't want to spend too long because I've got to go to sleep. Um, it's like five in the morning. Um, how do I play? So obviously they got a lot of air power. Fortunately, not enough to break the screen. Um, well, we've got this sort of forward looking <laughs> defense unit. What are they doing there? I'll have to move those. They are far too near. I'll probably have to blow them away with my, with my tanks. DE versus point six. <clears throat> I will probably move those away and do the bridge. No idea what they're doing there. So It's not very happy down there, is it? I don't know what to do, but essentially they've got a breakthrough, and I think, well, how are they going to get that breakthrough? There's a few empty spaces here, but they've got lots of little militia units down there. I don't think it doesn't like that. Look at it. I'd have to use some air power so they can sort of be used, but I think that what the Russians are facing is the The dilemma or the decision between how far to advance whilst waiting for reinforcements and how much air power to sort of use and where. I think I'm going to try and blow up this stack because it's got some tanks in there and some infantry, and I'm going to test my air power. So, but how do I want to do that? Do I want to maybe take out the air defences first? Well, we can definitely take these ones out without a problem. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We could probably blow that up. But what have we got here? We've got a stack. Let's use the armor to 
chase these guys about. I'll have to move them, they're stupid. Eliminated, of course. Got no, enough for one more attack. Eliminated. Well, I mean, that's what happens if you leave your air defense units somewhere stupid. Right, so we've wiped out that air defense company, uh, air defense battalion. I will move it. So we move into the city, but we haven't got we can't move there. Oh, we can. And we've got 0.4. We can attack this reconnaissance unit. I think, I can't remember now, I, I can't remember so much, but I think the reconnaissance units add to your um, artillery value. I think that that is actually the case. I'm not sure what it is, but. Um, So let's have a look at the rules. Reconnaissance units are rare. Currently, they are not configured, but will offer artillery bonuses to all units within a specific radius. This rule is not in play yet. Currently, reconnaissance units. Uh, okay. Um, Thing is, I don't know how to get back. Okay. But I think I've actually done that rule, though. Anyway, it doesn't matter. You can pretend they do. Right. I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just making a video now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put my fighter planes. But will I be able to intercept the drones? Let's try it. Let's put my MIG aircraft. Because it's no hassle doing this. Into air superiority. Right, let's use some drones to. I don't like these anti tank units. So there's basically one there and one there. So let's use a drone on that. Mm. Oh, there's two lots of those. Let's use another drone. He doesn't seem to have any air defense in the area. So let's use all our drones on that. So this is an air. Right, well, let's just use the helicopters. No effect. They should be doing morale checks now. Aborted. So one's routed. So we've removed the pesky anti tank units. Now let's move our air defense a little nearer.
Now we can move our armor a little nearer. I'll take out this this unit here. I don't think we've got any more movement, no. Let's send these units this way to sort out these guys. Oh, look at that. We can, go, we can attack them at low reduced odds with motorized across the screen, but 7 to 1 we still get DR. Into 40, into still got them, DR, I think. Nine. Make that a nice. Leave them there. Okay. I'm not really truly thinking about this sort of as maybe in a, in a competitive sense because uh, I'm only going to play. I just want to see what the Ukrainians get up to in their turn, really. We can definitely push these back. The only thing that we've got to worry about, we eliminated him, is that we've got anti tank units here. So let's use our uh, bombers on them. Interesting to see how much damage these do. <laughs> Nothing. I really have to just make the bombers more effective. And helicopters. So the anti tank units down to 4.6 and 3.2. Can the rockets move and fire? Yes. So let's see whether we can rocket them out. No effect, no effect. Okay. Getting there a bit. So presumably this rocket can try and finish this guy out. No, he's still there, pottering around at 11.3. Right, so we've still got the problem here of this anti-tank unit, but I don't think he's going to be much of a problem for long. Fresh reconnaissance unit. Okay, so that's it for the first turn. I've got air superiority. So that sort of um, it's it's interesting, really. My mind's not really into it, so I can't really sort of I'm not really sort of savouring it in any sense. Um, just sort of thinking, well, that's a Russian advance, but what what's at risk? So this is where it's so complex. There's going to be a lot of this photo opportunity for them to, and this is one of the reasons I sort of want to do this. So it's now the Ukrainian turn. So they have to advance on this sizable Ukrainian army, 
with oh look a lot of drones now let's see what happens if i try to get these so they obviously got a lot of drones i gave them a lot of drones um i'm not sure why but we're, let's try and take out some oh i don't know Be nice to take out some rockets It'd be nice to take out some tanks but let's take out some rockets because i think they're vulnerable and we're going to see whether these this air superiority actually gets in there the air those those you those migs should appear in the same place that the air defense units do in this combat screen yes so we got air defense and we got these migs so let's see what happens aborted quarter strength but it's still here because we got defensive units aborted quarter strength but he still blew it up basically so it is a it is effective aborted so when you see all those blown up russian units half strength but still 6.5 so he's going to be at 13.5 is there any point in trying any further i'm going to do one more because i want to see if i can destroy him shot down blown up or well, morale failed morale routed this is interesting really um i mean it's not scientific or uh, earth breaking but essentially for all of those units that we're seeing in twitter and I don't want to be too mean. It, it, it does frustrate me, really, because, you, you know, it takes us for idiots. And maybe maybe there's a justifiable argument for presenting a very simplistic version. But the thing is, as I said in the other video, I think the simplistic version they're presenting it really means nothing other than Russia bad, Third World War good, you, you know. And that, that's a really dangerous thing to be doing. And and so pointing out that in order to get this one photo op of this blown up Russian rocket position, which we won't be able to see because we don't show dead bodies in war blog. Which was there. To blow that up. We had to well we lost a drone um and only 50 percent of the drones although they were very very effective because it's just light skin rocket unit in in the open on its own so the russian really shouldn't do stuff like that um they but but 50 percent of the drones didn't get through so only 50 percent got through and they were effective because it's light skinned and one was shot down so there was there was a cost for that so whenever you see these pictures in twitter of all these russian columns blown up you've got to say well what was the cost now in this instance there was no ground cost because everything was a, a, um, an, an aerial unit but at the same point that was a, a russian unit and they have been pounding along and they took out quite a lot of the ukrainian reconnaissance units so there's a lot that you can learn in parallel to you know using this as to sort of try and understand what we're seeing in twitter um but they've still got a lot more drones so i'm just trying to think about what next i don't want to go for the other rocket because a i'm not going to play beyond the ukrainian turn um and it would just be more of the same it's going to be a soft skin target so we can try and take out some of these tanks but these tanks are in the city so they're not going to be much point these are in the city and these are out here one of the things that sort of maybe bear in mind you know i don't want to ever really watch my videos but um you know hypothetically talking to an unknown audience is that um you wouldn't this this is what's called I, well i call it battlefield vision um it's when you you can see everything across the battlefield some people call it god vision 
it's not playing God. It means you can see everything. You know where everything is. There's no fog of war. There's no sort of uncertainty. Now, in lots of war games, they'll sort of say, oh, you can't see all these. You don't know where everything is. But, you know, to keep it simple, we do it. So you might not be able to see these armoured units uh, because basically there would be a line of sight. For example, there's a lot of urban area in between. Um, but you've got these units that are quite close. But some games, you, you know, you would use these so you keep line of sight but here you don't so bearing in mind that you might not actually know where anything is i think we're going to go for this just to sort of see what these drones do against an unaccompanied armored unit in the open aborted core of strength I'll try two more. If I don't get a positive result, I'll think, I'll think about aborted. No effect. Three core of strength. I'm not going to do any more on that. Not because I don't think it's necessarily not worth it. I'm going to try and fire some of my rockets onto this. Because what we're looking for is some of the answers to why we're seeing all these Russian units blown up. 1.4 so that would have taken out i mean if this is a company with say 20 trucks 20, 20 armored vehicles uh, we, we just took out um two of them so there's two two smoking russian oh, not tanks not air fees you, you know metal things what do you call them Personnel, armored personnel carriers, APCs, rockets, no effect, no effect. Sometimes, you know, there the, is sort of quite difficult to um, to figure that out. But ar armored, basically, armored things, uh, mechanized infantry and armor get a big reduction in the effectiveness of artillery which is normal one thing i'm not i haven't really sort of got is, is the direct um sort of precision rocket precision so so that was aborted so i've got so much of this stuff going on right i'm not going to waste too much more time trying to take that out we've got this unit over here But look, we've got these two air defense units. Let's see if we can take them out. No effect. Shot down. No effect. Ugh. They should be quite easy to take out on their own. Oh, four, two. Considering they're the only ones in there. Oh, no, no, these are the other ones. We should probably really have focused on taking them out at the start. Routed one of them. And routed the other one. So there you go. The Ukrainians have done two photo ops. We've got an entire field over here of blown up um, Russian air defense units. So those expensive that vehicles with the big radar things on top, you know, and then all of a sudden you think, oh, the war is over. They've failed. They've lost. They've been defeated on the way. They've blown, been blown up. You know, so these are sort of, this is to some extent what I'm, I don't know, I'm just interested really. It's all, what's the point? You know, I mean, well, there is no point, but it is sort of, I don't know, it's, it's, it's an unprecedented period of history. Um, and you know, I reserve the right to be interested in it. And, um, it, you know, the thing is, there's only so much that I can do from my own sort of thinking. You know, I can't, there's no point in you know putting these maps together and i'm always thinking about you know that, that those maps that i showed why is that person doing it you know what what do they gain from doing that there's it's not even a game 
or something that they're trying to you know resell i think he was an author or a lecturer or so presumably he's going to sort of use this for sort of you know communicating in in sort of presentations and supporting his professional activities or, or whatever um but you, you know i mean there's not there's less point in him doing that unless he's sort of and and what i gathered when i was looking into it i started to look at, into that sort of um when i looked up that person's name on twitter there's a whole bunch of people just sitting there making maps of one sort either just using cheap crap because the one that I, the reason i choose those ones because those are exceptional high and very good quality maps they look good they got all the information and they're informative but there's lots of other people just sort of doing squiggly lines on google maps um, and then there's me doing this which has no bearing on anything um, other than it does give you an idea so i think what i've done is quite unique and different and it, it can be played and it, and i think that there's some value in that um, but i'm just going to sort of what finish up now i'm thinking well what can the ukrainians do well they've got a lot of forward units and these units down here which is the 81st air mobile they're all sort of stuck in these defensive positions we don't we're not in a position really to counter attack against anything you know this unit here wasn't hurt this unit here wasn't hurt this unit received basically almost no nothing i mean they can probably recover those vehicles that they lost um we can't really attack them with our militia units i think actually the thing to do now the other thing to just bear in mind about this scenario is that there's two bridges so it's an interesting sort of defensive position so we've got this river and i've given them forts there's two bridges so what we're going to make sure we do essentially is with these engineering units we can blow these bridges up we can blow this bridge here up now there's a one other thing to sort of bear in mind we've got all of these other units outside of that river thing now they can either come back this way go through the minefields and unfortunately the game doesn't support friendly units going through friendly minefields so or i can create a bridge down here with some engineering units as a sort of for these units to come in and these units come in and then blow the bridge up but it seems a bit much really but these units are sort of stuck but the russians you know they're going to have to build a bridge at some point and it's going to take them a long time so you can see so if we've got the fantastic drawing tool out put it onto my favorite setting we can see that already we've created a front line like that and none of this is going to really present a problem uh, the, the the whole thing is not going to really going to present a problem but i think the, the questions that you've got to sort of consider in the game sense is how much uh, attrition will the russians take in advancing forward because they're going to get more and more rockets and artillery fire on them as they, as they move forward um but i think possibly one way to approach this would be to sort of come down here and make a bridge there This will force them to defend or maybe we wouldn't want to do this one maybe we want to do this one here because then we can come out there 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 or there this one they just sit in there some stuff so you can come down here and then come this one they have to leave all the defensive positions and of course we can put something down here to sort of cross here and to cross here to maybe cross here but this could be our sort of the you know the the i don't know what this sort of maneuver would be because we're we're only we're only sort of trying to tie them up in the north um whilst making a breakthrough in the south to create a pocket and then just basically isolate them um and force them to to, to actually retreat voluntarily um 
But um, I'm going to leave it at that anyway, unless I can think of any more. Um, so the only things that I can do are sort of move certain things about. Um, I don't think there's anything else. This is the only, this is the nearest to anything. There's no. I'll take, oh, we've got some anti tank here. How far can he fire? One, two, three. I don't think he'll get there. Oh yeah, we we can. So we've got some of these anti tank units. This tries a bit. Nothing. Point seven. So we sort of did a little bit of damage to that. I think I'll move him there so he can build some more mines. I think we're going to have to move back. Have left them there. These guys, I think I might leave them there because the Russians will have to deal with them. Leave him there, bring him forward to this town or village. Engineers, let's put him there and we'll build something. And his artillery unit you know, on his own. But he won't be able to do anything. No. I'm going to leave it at that. It's taken too long, other one. So it's only one turn. I think it's interesting. Um, as I said, there's so many points that I could just sit here. And I'd, I'd love to. I'd love to just sort of sit there, just producing interesting map after interesting map. Um, creating the map, it takes a bit of time. But, but maybe I could speed that up. And I have got, I mean, basically, I have speeded up the whole process a little bit um, because I can use a spreadsheet and I can build an army with a spreadsheet. But I've still got to sort of do all the hard work. And, you know, I can't just sort of use the same spreadsheet for, this, for every other campaign because they have to be in a particular position. It's actually harder to re replace units than it is to actually just start from scratch um, but you know now that I've discovered those maps I, I do feel as though I could make some more effort uh, in the back of my mind um, I might start to sort of save those maps um, but in, in the back of my mind I know this is probably really not a very good thing to say um, I'm just thinking that the war will be over soon <laughs> and, uh, and then uh, I'll have lost all these opportunities to create interesting maps and scenarios. But um, I mean, it's 11 days now, or something like that, 12 days, and it's it's, it, it's the whole war is just mind blowing, really. And I'm just think, I was just thinking today. I wonder how soon people will just forget, because I was sort of you know I was busy today doing stuff and. I was just sort of thinking, you know, so sooner or later people are going to become bored with the Ukraine war. It's just going to be like another one of those things, you know, they've had that sort of that jolt of whatever, and um, and at some point they're going to become bored with reading again that they have the Russians still haven't taken Kiev, the Russians still haven't taken Maripol, the Russians still haven't taken Sumy. It's a failed war, you know, and and. Those line, those 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 maps just paint a completely different picture, and um, but it wouldn't surprise me that if most people are becoming quite bored with the war because um, it's just pictures of you, you know um, people boo hooing and you, you know um, not without reason, 
I, I, I don't like to say it really because obviously it's a terrible thing that, that's happening and you know sort of thinking well, I feel compelled to sort of say oh those poor people but at the, at the same time I think that um, those poor people were there in in Syria in the Middle East and Afghanistan or Libya and all across Africa and uh, it doesn't you know obviously obviously I don't need to explain the hypocritical connotations of all of that um, but I think there's you need to you need a greater degree of mental acumen to overcome it um, when you're looking at the news and media you, you really it's not as simple to it's you know you sort of like you might think well okay well, I'll just ignore it but it's, it's hard to divide a narrative and, and sort of talk about the war in any other way without continually regurgitating some sort of facet of the humanitarian implications and perspective and angles on it all and um you, you know and, and the thing is i don't really feel i don't like being compelled or obliged to consider that um you know and i'm not but the thing is at the same time i think that there's a greater pressure currently to do that than there was ever with any of the other wars um, but anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. I will try to produce more maps because you know, when I look at this and I sort of think, well, this is just really interesting. And again, the, the only thing that I can say is, well, uh, which is what I said with all the other games, you know, in the Middle East and whatnot. You need to play them again and again to to, to get a, a good balance. I don't know whether this is going to be a good balance or whether it's going to be. Um, a walkover or whether the Russians are actually going to have a problem um, but you know from what we did see there we saw good indications as to what what's happening to produce what we're seeing I mean if there's, you know it doesn't matter how big the advance is the Ukrainians have some big heavy weapons and they're firing them um, at the advancing Russians so of course we're going to see a lot of that stuff um anyway so I'll, I'll leave it at that and i'll uh speak to you later cheerio